Of course, uh, many happy moments uh, were in China, definitely, and also very sad moments in China, both. Um, uh, happy moments in China is because maybe Claudia has expressed the same idea. Chi China was for us a school, was a great school, you know? maybe in the sense that Mao said you know, to, to make society a great school. <laughs> the idea that society can be a school, not in a, in a scholastic term, but in the sense that something that you can learn from, also from ordinary people. Eh? So this is uh, very important uh, for us to have, but also was a school in, uh, in technical terms because we, we attended school in China, both uh, language and uh, in philosophy department as we discussed today with uh, our friends and Claudia, with David Zweig. Um, it was also very important to see in that moment we were students during the Cultural Revolution, uh, the style of, 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 of professors, in, especially in, in Beijing University, you know, the style of the modesty, uh, the attitude, <laughs> the egalitarian attitude toward, toward students, uh, and uh, well, the mutual respect, uh, this, is, this was important. Uh, of course, there have been many, many important uh, or less important moments that uh, my, my, my happiness with in China is composed by different moments. Uh, uh, some very abstract and some very concrete. Uh, uh, of course, there are some spaces that um, are very attractive for me, some landscapes, uh, some parts of Beijing that I am particularly uh, attached, uh, uh, but also some, some, uh, some experiences uh, uh, during travels uh, or, or knowing new friends uh, or uh, in, in some experiences that Claudia maybe has mentioned uh, in countryside or in factories, uh, uh, it's not. Uh, sometimes it is, it is difficult to, to explain to, to 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 our friends how was important to 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 make these sort of experiences uh, with the uh, the open door school. You know? uh, because somebody asked me, oh, well, maybe you were snob uh, to go. No, it's not, not a snob issue. No, because basically speaking, how you can refuse such an experience to live one month in, in, in a house of peasants in 1975, 76, it was an absolutely exceptional experience for a foreigner in particular. You could learn a lot of things that uh, uh, nobody refused. Uh, David absolutely came enthusiastically, as uh, all of us, to, 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 to do this sort of experience. The same in the factories. Uh, we, have, uh, <coughs> we have learned a lot. We have, uh, we have seen... The, the, uh, it was also a, a special school uh, politically. It was a political school, China. In, in, in a particular um, sense that, uh, uh, as I <laughs> told uh, in, in the morning during the talk, uh, especially the, 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 the two years when Claudia and me and also David were students at Peita, uh, was a special, um, a special moment in, uh, in um, in Chinese politics, it was the, the last two years of the Cultural Revolution, and uh, I'm convinced that in, no, we, we were convinced also at, also at that time that in that moment there were decisive theoretical issues and political issues that were on the stake, you know, at the stake, in, uh, and there were political issues that at stake not only for China. Uh, and not only for cultural revolution, was, uh, what was at stake was uh, a political assessment uh, of socialism in the 20th century. 
because you know uh, we discussed the, the, in the morning when, when Mao said what is really the dictatorship of the proletariat you know this uh, this question mark involved uh, an experience that came from the man communist manifesto uh, Marx said what I have invented is not class struggle because uh, this also the bourgeois economist uh, did uh, uh, discover the, the existence of class struggle. What I've discovered is the dictatorship of the proletariat. So it's something that uh, comes from 48, uh, so in, 70, in 75 when, uh, when Mao invited everybody to rediscuss uh, the, the issue of the dictatorship of the proletariat meant uh, to rediscuss the entire epoch of, uh, of modern egalitarian politics. Uh, so for us was uh, was definitely a, a, a moment of um, that that uh, uh, in which we, we have learned a lot of how we rediscuss uh, and reconsider the, uh, some 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 basic uh, political issue not only not only in sinological terms. Uh, so this. Uh, in this sense, was a political school, and it was a political school that also helped us to um, to pass through the 80s, because you know the uh, after the end of 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 the 60s, of the long 60s, as we can say, because Cultural Revolution. Uh, today we, 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 we discussed the periodization and I agree with, with David that we can start from late 50s uh, but we can go on to the late uh, 70s. You know, there is a long period that starts with the senior soviet dispute and maybe ends with the Solidarność in Poland. You know? uh, so after the long 60s, the 80s uh, in China as uh, everywhere in the world uh, were marked by a, um, uh, a full restoration of, uh, but a full restoration of what exactly? Now, what was fully restored? Uh, rethinking the the, the 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 last Maoist thesis, Maoist thesis on on socialism was the full restoration of the rule of the. Of, of the modern government, capitalism is the rule. And as I told you today, socialism was an exception. And what I've learned most you know, in that school, <laughs> in that moment, was that ex that, that exception was uh, precarious, was uh, finally weak. Uh, and uh, at that moment, uh, we did not believe so much that uh, 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 capitalism could be restored. Uh, we, we interpreted this, uh, s such formula as a, a, a bit too much uh, polemical, <laughs> uh, too, a bit dogmatic. How is it possible that capitalism can be restored? You remember in 75, 76 they were still the socialist countries, Soviet Union, half Europe was socialist in Italy. We had a, a, a strong, maybe one of the strongest communist party in, in, in the world. So the idea that all that institutional framework of socialism could be dissolved in, was out of our horizon. But in fact, <laughs> Mao was, was right when he, when he said that the, the, to, to make capitalism in China is very easy. Gao's Benjui Han Rongyi. Because, why is it easy? Because it's the rule. And the socialism is absolutely an exception. The, the, so, uh, <laughs> I remember the, the, there is a word that I, I, I read only last year. Uh, <laughs> during the, 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 the process, uh, the, the, the trial against the Maoists you know, in the uh, early 80s, Zhang uh, Chunqiao uh, spoke very little. Uh, Jan Qing was very polemic, but Jan Chun Chao almost uh, nothing. He, he, he even didn't uh, look at the judges. Uh. But finally, he make a, a, a sort of statement, a final statement, and he said uh, exactly these words: "Say, Anjao, 
这个世界的规则，我早知道这个世界要到。This is, uh, is very important. Anjao jigashijie de guizhe. So the, the rule of this world is capitalism, absolutely. You know? And he was one great uh, leader of an exception. He made uh, mistakes for, for sure, as everybody, but he, <coughs> he claimed to have been uh, the leader of an exception, uh, <coughs> as Mao was. So, I think that in this sense uh, we must uh, look for another exception, for other exception to capitalism. Nobody can uh, revive socialism. Uh, I think that we, we must uh, think in a completely different way. But from this new perspective we also must go back to, to <coughs> to reassess uh, Chinese socialism and the rest of socialism in the, in the, in the, in the 20th century. Uh, otherwise, uh, this, is a, this is an important intellectual task, I think, for, um, for I hope, for, for many of us. <laughs> so this is a, some short uh, elements. Not, not, I have not fully answered to your question about happiness, but uh, you know, happiness is a, is a, is a, is a, is a difficult concept, you know, it's not simply satisfaction. Happiness means uh, something that uh, you have found after uh, um, a long <laughs> search <laughs> and sometimes you become happy, you know, not, uh, it's not easy to, 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 to be happy. In, in some cases you can become happy. And Can uh, I ask him something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Weren't you happy when you became father and then grandfather? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes, because it so was for me a two uh, of no absolutely but it's, it's another it's, it's another it's another kind of happiness. Uh, but yes. in 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 uh, in the case of my daughter, I, I strongly desired uh, that uh, she came. So I was uh, enthusiastic, not only happy, and uh, and when she became uh, mother, absolutely, well, wasn't I was enthusiastic. There are different level of happiness. Yes. There is a political happiness. There are there are. The, the sphere of love, of personal love, of uh, uh, the sphere of artistic happiness is another, is another, you know, so mm. there are different levels of uh, to be happy or to be sad. Uh, is different uh, happiness from satisfaction. Uh, satisfaction uh, is ordinary. Happiness is rare, I think. You know? <laughs> And then another question, uh, what's the turning point of a life? Also in this case different turning points, yes. different turning points uh, and uh, some way well, all the turning points are important and finally positive because the turning points it depends on how one uh, approaches the turning points but for me all the turning points have been finally positive, in the long term have been positive. And um, of course, uh, by the turning point of, of the 60s, my personal participation uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the movement of the 60s have been a turning point. But, you know, I don't want to exaggerate the significance of a participation of the 60s because everybody was participated in the 60s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a, so such a large activism uh, among students that was nothing uh, was not rare that students were involved in uh, manifestation. <coughs> of course, okay. of course, because uh, uh, other turning points have, have been um, more problematic. For example, Claudia maybe as mentioned the, the, the 89 in China, the 89 in China was a turning point. Was a turning point because uh, um, of course it was a terrible experience, was, was a personal, it was, was a very was a very difficult experience. Moreover, we, we were in China, as Claudia uh, has told, for, for several months from the, uh, January or something like that in in Guangzhou for for a for a survey among workers, uh, 
and uh, we had the the feeling that something was changing in in the in the deep <laughs> in the deep structure if i can say of of chinese state of chinese politics and this we learned this from workers the workers we interviewed they were very uh, conscious, very aware that a turning point was imminent, but nobody could imagine which kind of turning point, because everything seemed in that moment quite open. Uh, there was an open debate on uh, economic policies, on the destinies of uh, the socialist institution, of uh, uh, the industrial Dangwei in that case, etc. Or suddenly the, 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 18, uh, the, the, the Tiananmen uh, tragedy <clears throat> was was a turning point, uh, and in that case, uh, for us, uh, for me, for Claudia, the, that turning point was very difficult to elaborate. You know. uh, uh, was not exactly as to elaborate a mourning <laughs> in the psychoanalytic sense, but in a sense to understand exactly something that we can. In a sense, we, we have some elements to, to, to understand. Uh, we, we have not, uh, it was not for us uh, the alternative between democracy and uh, totalitarianism, no, not in this sense. No. So we, we had already started to, 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 to investigate the, the passage after the, the epoch of socialism. It was, was, was a problem, for, was, was, was already a problem for us. But in those terms, uh, and, uh, there was a, there was a huge change. So uh, it was a turning point that is still uh, uh, where well, there are still some 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 open questions for us that um, not not fully fully solved. I think for, for many for many Chinese friends also, eighty nine is is still an unsolved. Uh, uh, problem and also so this is an example of a, <laughs> of a particularly problematic turn, turning point you know, in a political sense uh, you you have um, many experience in china mm -hmm. and then uh, what you further uh, to further for your chinese work china work for china for your further china work no, what the, I've just finished uh, a, 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 a book, a book uh, that uh, in, where I, I try to, to, to reconsider the Cultural Revolution from a, a spatial perspective. Uh, that is the. Uh, head to head, the face to face between the cultural revolution and the revolutionary culture. See, the idea that there were a set of uh, political subjectivities, a multiple set of religious subjectivities uh, during the, the ten year, the, 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 the revolutionary decade, and on the other hand, on the other side, there was a a very structured, a very compact political culture that we can call uh, revolutionary culture. I tried this, uh, this uh, research path uh, to reopen a, 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 a research perspective on cultural revolution because really it's an intellectual disaster that uh, the decade is uh, totally um, forbidden for research is a disaster for China and for everybody because uh, it has been the last great uh, political movement in the world. So the idea that there is a, such a political ban on study of cultural revolution uh, in China more than in Hong Kong, uh, we must pass through Hong Kong bookshops to buy good books on on, on the cultural revolution because in China. Uh, they have only bad books translate for in, from English <laughs> against the uh, cultural revolution. The, the Chinese scholars must publish their book in Hong Kong. Eh? No, this is a, a, a very <clears throat> a very bad situation. So this is a, my my um, my work for 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 a few years recently has been focused on, on, on this issue. What I would like to, to, to do in future, well, the, 
it's, it's just a project that we have with Claudia, but uh, we don't know if it is possible. Uh, in in eighty nine, uh, we we have learned a lot by uh, uh, this uh, in in this uh, in, in investigation, in this inquiry with workers. Uh, we we have learned a lot, not in not in a populist sense, but 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 of course. When, when you look at the society from below or from the highest place, you, you see different things, absolutely different. Just to say the, the, the situation of 89, I, I talked uh, yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday with Lao Kinchi. What impressed us was that the workers in the factories in 89 were, were fully aware that something was changing definitely. The leaders, especially the Junjian Gambu, they were convinced that the chair was very solid, they could never change. No. And so I think that today also to interview ordinary people in China and to see China from below, you know, from the from the grassroots, uh, uh, also for a foreigner can be very helpful, uh, instead to see only from the skyscrapers. skyscrapers uh, uh, it's very funny to see the, um, the new buildings in China, but uh, maybe there is something more real, more uh, realistic, I, I would say, that can be seen only uh, from, uh, from, from below. There's a, well, you know, there is <laughs> our famous, uh, I quote, our Italian glories, Machiavelli, Machiavelli, who said that in order to, to, to <coughs> I say to to draw, no, the 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 <coughs> to draw a, a mountain, no, the form of a mountain. You look, you must look it from the plane. Uh, <laughs> in order to, so also also in order to look at the the present uh, the present condition of Chinese state or Chinese government. Uh, to look from below is important. So we, Machiavelli is <laughs> has something to learn, uh, to teach us in this sense. Um, so this is that, but I, we have not uh, uh, concrete project because it probably was easier in '89 to interview uh, uh, workers in 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 in. Inside the factories, in the in the Chinese state factory, then today to to go in uh, the Foxconn. Foxconn is a is is a prison, is a, a barrack, uh, and you cannot enter in the Foxconn. Um, I, well, who knows? But I suppose that is more difficult now. But probably not. Who knows? But in the case. Of course, the situation is totally different. There are uh, totally different. We should ask totally different questions, of course, to a Dagumei, Dagunzai today than to the Gun Ren Shufu, to the the, the Gun Ye Wei in the late 80s. But we can understand the similar. Um, uh, <coughs> but, uh, something something important as as then. So this is uh, our project, and probably if we are able to to make this, uh, this project uh, to compare the two the two the two research uh, to do to do surveys, I think that uh, this moment in China is also a turning point, and uh, probably the ordinary people can look at this turning point with more uh, open eyes than uh, than other. This is just um, our project, but uh, I hope that we can do something. <laughs> I hesitate a bit on this, <laughs> on this issue because <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, no, you must be careful about them. Um,